I'm so excited. Oh, you can't really see what's going on over there, can you? That was the whole point. Matt's Botanical Gardens. I need to remember in 50 minutes that I need to release today's video. Saturday. So the, you're watching this on a Saturday. Last Saturday's video comes out soon. That's the Orchid Show. Finally, the Orchid Show. Haven't had one in several years. They've been doing construction. This place looks completely different. I also film different than I used to, so I, I don't feel okay about having strangers in my videos. I just feel like it's disrespectful. And this place is really crowded. I think people, I'm using you as a mirror right now before I go in there. Don't know what the point is. Didn't put product in my hair. I'm thinking, I didn't do it. And hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Probably grab the car key. So I was thinking uh, I'll probably get some shots of the shopping while I'm in there. And then more than likely going to come back during the week, during the day when it's not as crowded to film the actual orchid show, all the displays of all the beautiful tropical plants and orchids. There's a lot to show. This is all new from last time that I did a tour here. This building, they've completely redone it so it's not gonna be like other years where it was kind of the same thing every year. No, there's some big changes in here and I can't wait to see it. That, and I have to be fairly fast in here because my uh, contractor person's coming by the house in like an hour and a half or two hours with floor samples. So don't even have an option to stay that long. Yeah, that was very fast. Holy freaking crowded. It actually wasn't that crowded. It's just the new space where they're doing the sale is like teeny, t like could barely move. It took me 22 minutes just to buy one plant because the, you couldn't walk. So that was a bit much for me. I grabbed a couple orchids and the room was so small, I was able to just kind of glance around and go, yeah, don't think I want any of these. I'm pretty picky about my orchids these days. I think that gonna have to come back to do a decent job looking around the orchid show i may even postpone it to like a week or two from now because it goes all month long and uh, i just yeah there are so many people there's no way i was gonna get good shots without having people in them i don't mind editing out a face here and there but it was like packed so i said uh it's time to get out of here and i need to get home for the floor sample stuff anyways but i'm, I'm really excited about the new orchids i'll give you a closer look at them in a little bit this is that's good for now Charlie. Toby, hey Tobes, how you doing? I'm sorry, Toby, that's a rough angle. It's not your fault. And of course, Turbo's here. Pumpkin, she's downstairs. A few days have passed, several <laughs> things have been going on, all the home improvement stuff. Thank y'all, by the way, for your input when I was asking last week about the hardwood floors. I should have mentioned during that conversation that when I said hardwood floors, I just meant anything that resembled hardwood. I think actual wood in this home with the these guys and all the aquariums and the plants, probably a bad idea. Especially during the summer when this one, the swamp monster, always wet. I mean, you dry them off before he comes inside, but still, there's always water all over the place. That would have been a bad idea. So the follow-up to that after talking to the contractor is that a bamboo or a engineered, bam it's like bamboo with some kind of engineered. What's going to be going down is something very durable, something with some texture to it for grip, 
for the dogs and anyone else, just so it's not too slippery, but not it's not gonna be like oak or maple flooring. That's that that's not happening. It was like a bad idea. I know if you were just here for the orchids, that was a very odd transition. This whole video has been odd. It's been a weird week. As we can talk about the orchids now. Sorry again that I couldn't really film while I was in there, but it was like it was nuts to butts. Jam-packed, crowded, really couldn't move. That's why I only got the two orchids. I, I, by the time I had paid for both those, I was like, I'm out of here. I can't even look around. It was just too much. For a couple little glimpses that y'all just saw, but that was about it. And the show itself, beautiful. We'll go back for better footage of that. Here's what I grabbed. The, aren't they pretty? They smell fantastic. Okay, well, I should say this one right here smells fantastic. It's a Zygopetalum. By the way, if you're not an orchid person, just hear me out here for just a moment. Orchids. Not that different from the aeroids most people are growing. Really, at all. Look at an aeroid mix. It's basically the same thing used for most orchids. Foliage, beautiful, fun to look at. Have the fun little pseudobulbs down around the bases of a lot of them. Hopefully more smooth and not as wrinkled as those right there. Some of them have fun canes. The majority of them will climb up a pole if that's your thing. They'll just grow right up there as long as you have some moisture on it. And the flowers, that's what we all know orchids for. I don't think that orchids get the love and attention they deserve in the houseplant community. There's this whole idea behind them. I have to look at, they're so stinking cute. Got both the seniors up there on the love seat. Got distracted by the pets, what was I talking about? Stigma, that orchids, super hard to grow. Not, it's really not the case. Sure, there are some, and it's going to depend on where you live, like this one right here that I'm about to talk about may not be appropriate for some people, depending on where you live. It will be more challenging. But there are some that I've talked about in the past and I'm gonna talk about now, like the Maxillaria tenufolia, the coconut orchid. Really fun house plant. Did a whole video on it. The flowers smell nice. They're cute and weird looking. And the plant itself is just very lush and a nice, peaceful looking plant to have around the house. And it's an easy one to grow. And so is this other one that I'm about to show you. And of course the Phalaenopsis types that you see all over the place like this. This is a Lego one. That's plastic, if you couldn't tell. But that type of orchid that you see at like the Trader Joe's and the grocery stores and all the big box stores. Great for beginners. I suggest giving them a try. They're fun to grow. They're rewarding. They don't take up a ton of space. Especially y'all who have the like the cabinets set up for the humidity control and everything. But why? Why not have some orchids in there? Something that'll put out some flowers every now and then and give you some fragrance. It's worth a shot. They're fun house plants, and I think that they are for everyone. A lot of people will buy an orchid. They kill it, and then they go, oh, I can't grow orchids. But people kill plants all the time. Doesn't mean you can't grow them. Maybe it just means you had bad luck. Try again. Don't be a quitter. May have just been bad luck. If you've been watching the channel for a long time, you may know that I used to have a ton. I mean a ton ton of orchids, hundreds of orchids. And a bunch of stuff happened in the summer of 2020. Other people who didn't really know plants had to take care of my plants and now I, I don't have very many orchids, <laughs> which is fine. I'm not even sad or upset about that given all the other things that were going on that year. It is what it is. I was hoping that the orchid show 2023 would be a chance to start adding back to the collection. It'll never be back up to what it was. I don't want it to be. It took up too much space and I've just gotten very particular about which plants I want around. But my hopes with going to the orchid show were, hey, I'm going to be able to pick them out in person. Where I live here in St. Louis, and it's like this in a lot of the United States, there aren't many nurseries that sell orchids or if they do, they're just kind of an assortment of orchids. They're not normally labeled. Yeah, occasionally Lowe's gets in the bagged orchids and the I don't I don't really care for those absolutely nothing wrong with those it's just one of those things where those have been around I don't know they just don't do anything for me I really like to see them in person I don't buy them very often anymore either so I feel more justified to spend a little bit more money to buy nice big established plants even though it's fun to get the little ones and watch them grow what I have right here is a replacement of one of my favorite orchids that I've ever grown that's a zygopetalum this one's a jumpin' jack clone the jumpin' jacks have petals that usually have some more green modeled in there with the brown and the purple lip which is, that's that's my jam. Zygopetalums have a fun base, a fun pseudobulb that's normally swollen out and smooth and green. This one apparently got thirsty at some point, which I don't care. I think that they're relatively easy to grow. Lower temperatures spurt them to bloom. The mine that I've always grown usually will bloom two to three times a year, which is nice. Great added bonus. I think the flowers are beautiful and they smell fan. 
fantastic, sometimes overpowering. Fragrance is mostly noticeable in the morning time, like morning to like maybe early afternoon, and then again a little while in the evening. I don't normally smell it all day long. They tend to like things more on the moist side. It's not an orchid that I would let dry out, which is gonna be more the case for the next orchid that I'll talk about after this one. I tend to treat the zygopetalums more like I would a standard house plant. If I feel into that mix that's in there, down to that orchid bark, can you see it? That's the blend that it's in down there. It looks an awful lot like an aeroid mix, doesn't it? Because it is, essentially, depending on what kind of aeroid you're growing. If it seems like it's, you know, halfway dry down there, something like that, it's time to water. So when I have zygopetalums, I normally water them sometimes a couple times a week, depending on how dry the air is. They also tend to not do great with really warm temperatures. So during the summer, I keep all my plants outside. We have the spells where it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It, these need to go way back into the deep shade. I don't normally let them get a ton of light anyways, just some filtered morning light. That's all they need. It's similar to like a lot of hostas and ferns. I think a lot of hostas can take a good amount of sun these days. So let's stick with the fern thing. Filtered morning light, they're pretty happy with that. Direct sun scorches the leaves. Same thing in the house. I don't ever use, I don't normally keep these in any windows like south facing windows. I don't want them too close to the glass because they will scorch. They need to be pushed back somewhat. Not too far, maybe a couple feet and they're good. A nice bright environment. And another that nice thing about the temperatures, and this is true with most orchids, how the temperature change can trigger the flowering. In the cooler parts of the year, sometimes I will push them closer to the glass. Well, I just realized that that may not make a difference now that I have new windows and they aren't drafty. In the past, my windows were very drafty and I could just push the orchids closer to the glass and that would normally trigger them to bloom because of the so much cooler, but I, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. There are other ways. With the flower on the jumping jack, not your thing, there are a whole bunch of different flowers to look at with the zygopetalums. Some are more of a mauve, some of them are almost a black with a blue lip on them. Some of them are much more green with very small lips on them. There's a lot to choose from, and they're worth doing some reading on if you wanna pick one out for your environment, because there are some that are more heat tolerant than others, kind of like with spathophyllums, like the peace lilies up here. There are some that are much, much, much more tolerant of really warm conditions than others. So if you're looking for an orchid that's pretty easy to grow and should flower for you a couple times a year and make the house smell really nice, I'd say give these a try and do some research. If you live in a really dry environment, maybe this one's not for you. Having humidity definitely helps. That ties back to all the aeroid stuff I was talking about. These, they like it humid. One thing about them, in my experience growing them, major major magnets for mealybugs and spider mites. They have those soft grass-like leaves, which is all it takes for the bugs. The critters, they love those thin grassy-like blades, which is also why we're in here and not out in the gross space, because I have the spider mite situation going on out there that is maybe getting better. I don't know. We're going to report back on that next week. As it is right now, any new plants I get are not allowed to go out there. They're all being quarantined in the house, which has been fun because this one over here this guy, Charlie, likes to chew on plants, big time. I've had to guard the crap out of these things around him. He was being relentless, kept jumping up and I'd pull him down, like gently pick him up and set him down. He would just like nonstop for about five minutes and eventually he gave up and just took a nap. But he's not allowed in this room without supervision while the orchids are in here. I can't really find a spot around the house where I'm thinking that they will be happy. This is a good window over here that he can't get to him. I don't know, I'm gonna do some search around, see if I can find a spot where I think these will be okay and uh, he won't be able to get to them. The next one, one of my favorite orchids, I think I've talked about these before, it's a BC, which is a Brassavola Cattleya mix. Anytime you can take a Brassavola nodosa, which is a fantastic, great orchid for beginners, pretty sturdy type of orchid. They have fun white flowers, with a tubular shaped lip that comes out. They have a fairly vigorous growth and a lot of them will bloom two to three times a year, sometimes even more. Sometimes I've had brassavolas before that just seemed like they were popping out flowers almost all year, which that's not, that, that's not normal, but it's happened. So BC meaning brassavola cross with catlia, which is another orchid that has a flower that's shaped similar to this right here, but the petals tend to be larger and the lip much bigger. They vary in all kinds of sizes. They generally have thicker canes than these do right here. The Brassavola has a thinner cane on it. And again, there's variations with all those things. The Maikai, if I'm even saying that right, it's a great one. They have beautiful flowers. Aren't they pretty? But the Maikai is one of the classics of the BC crosses. Isn't that just beautiful? That's a stunning orchid. Even the ones that are over here that are aging out, even those look pretty good. Flowers tend to be long lasting. I think that having a good amount of humidity does help prolong the flowers, but the BCs aren't like the Zygo 
over here, the first orchid that I talked about. Well, they'll wither away if you don't have high humidity. In fact, in a lot of places like Santa Barbara and a lot of Southern California, these are growing fairly well for people outside. In an environment where we know the humidity is much lower, and generally along the coast you can get away with a lot of things you can't get away with inland. It must be taken with a grain of salt, but in my experience, they've never ever thrown a fit. They can go more on the dry side. I'm not talking like you're growing a desert cactus kind of dry. They still need to be watered and all that stuff, but it's just not going to be like the zygo over here, which is a plant that I mentioned I would treat more like a fern, where they need consistent moisture. Of course, you need to stay on top of watering properly with these, but it's not the kind of thing where they're just going to shrivel up and die if maybe you go a little bit too long. During the winter time, I should have mentioned this with the zygo. During the winter time, I, maybe I did say, once to twice a week with the zygopetalum, that would normally be out in the growth space where it's 77 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit with the humidity that varies from between 60 to 75 percent. Measurements move around a lot because there's a giant garage door there that opens up every now and then and I do like some shift in my temperature because I just think it's more natural for the plants and it saves me some electricity to have the temperature drop in the evening time. With this one probably get watered about once a week in those conditions. In the house during the winter time maybe every seven to ten days so not a huge difference just by having it more around the 70 degree temperature. The main difference in the house is that my average humidity indoors is like 45 to 55 percent and that really varies. And there are variations out there in the growth space that I've talked about before. If it's super crazy cold outside the heater's running at full capacity which makes it so that the humidifier has a hard time keeping up and when that happens humidity can drop into the 50 ish percent area which is normally still okay for everything these are sturdy i think they're worth everybody giving a try they have the fun canes on them they will spread around you can mount them to some bark you can put them on a pole if you really wanted to my kai is a classic one of my favorites i have another one that i absolutely love that i've shown on the channel that's called spring uh, springs i don't remember i'll try and put it up here on the screen of course it's when i'm filming that's when the brain stops working spring something. It's a beautiful orchid. I have that one in a basket. And I'll probably be moving this one into a basket too. I like the way these look when they're in a basket and you can hang them up in a tree and it's easier to just splash them with water when you're watering outside as opposed to when they're in a pot in the ground. There's much more of a tendency to want to soak them and then you can have issues with them rotting out and dying. So a basket's really just to protect them from me and my tendency to overwater and just wanting to just soak everything when I'm outside. Um, and speaking of baskets, when did those get so expensive? I went into the, they call it the garden gate shop at the botanical gardens here because they usually have a good amount of supplies that sometimes are hard to find other places, bonsai soils and pots and orchid stuff like baskets the little wooden baskets sometimes they're square sometimes they're an octagon 45 50 bucks something like that for the little wood those things used to be dirt cheap you still pick them up from like Lowe's and Home Depot for eight to fifteen dollars I'm talking like ten years ago a long time since I've even seen those for sale at a local nursery so like I said there's not a ton of orchid growing going on around here so it's a harder thing to find I will have to probably order the basket online which is that's fine I won't be repotting this until it's done flowering anyways, which more than likely won't be long. Normally when I'm picking out an orchid, I like to get them when they have a couple flowers that are open, lots of little sheaths or buds that haven't opened up yet. The sheath, it looks kind of like a, like a bean pod that sticks out from between the leaves that are on here. You can, they swell up and well, actually they resemble a leaf, really. It's just much smaller, usually semi-translucent coloration. You can just tell that they're different, usually. That way there's still lots of flowering left to enjoy. But the Maikai, I really just wanted the largest plant because I know how well that these bloom. So even though this one may only have maybe a week or two left to be covered in flowers, in a couple months it's going to be covered again. And the more growth it has on it, the more flowers it'll have. So this is nice wanted a nice big robust plant. Outdoors I would treat it very similar to the zygopetalum but with less water but the same thing as far as light goes. Bright filtered morning light, direct sun only if it's cooler outside. Maybe during the spring when I have them outside I bring them out a little bit earlier than I do some of my other plants so they can take some cooler morning temperatures. And I'll allow them to get some more light but still afternoon sun I try and protect them. If you live someplace where you can actually grow them outside especially along the coast, then you might be able to get away with get uh, <laughs> you might be able to get away with giving them a lot more sun. Because again, if you live in the coastal areas, you can usually push things a lot further in the direction of sunlight than you can when you live inland. The, that constant airflow and more of a steady temperature range. The plants seem to appreciate that. Push a lot more boundaries when you have those conditions. Here in St. Louis, 
Summers are very hot, very humid. I have a lot of dark pavement out there. It's a just bad idea. I like to make sure they're not getting any sun in the afternoon and any direct sun, I like for it to be pretty brief. What are you growling at? Turbo. Turbo. What are you growling at? What's that about? This one, he's like a toddler. He gets a little bit sleepy and then he just, he gets the grumblings. Any little, really? Why? Stop it. You don't need to do that. You want to go check it out? Would that make you feel better? You want to go see what it is? What I try to do with the grumblies is just say, go check it out. Resolve whatever that anxiety is. Don't come to me for comfort. Go figure it out. But right now, I think he just needs a nap. Uh, what was, go? oh yeah, orchids. So yeah, there they are. A couple of fun plants. I think I gave more than enough detail on them. I talked about them enough. You get it. They have fun looking growth, nice looking flowers. One of them smells fantastic. And they're both types that should continue to flower throughout the year off and on. Didn't have a massive orchid haul like I was maybe hoping I would, but that's okay. I got two of the plants that I really wanted. I've always loved having my zygopetalums in the past. So I'm happy to have a new one. I've wanted a new one of the Maikais for a long time. So can add those back to the collection. Not actually, I'm not putting them outside with the other plants. That's gotta wait a while. Still a lot of stuff that needs to happen outside with the spider mites. The only other orchids that are like big on my wish list at this point, cause I've grown so many and it's so easy to end up with, as y'all know, if you're a plant nerd, you know, sometimes you, you, you get to a point where you just have too many plants sometimes. And I don't want that to happen again. So I'm being very, I mean extremely particular about which orchids I will buy from this point on. There's really only like two others that are on my wish list at this point. The, you know, those wish lists, they'll keep growing. But one is I would like a new Lelia Santa Barbara Sunset, one of my all-time absolute favorite orchids. And I'm thinking I may just order one directly from Santa Barbara Orchids. It's pricey to do it that way, but I just, I never see them around. They have them online. They're generally pretty expensive for really small plants. I'm gonna spend over 50 bucks. I'd rather just go all out and get a nice big established plant, a nice big one. Santa Barbara Orchids, if you don't know, you can check them out online. They're an orchid grower in Santa Barbara. Yeah, the Santa Barbara Sunset. Beautiful orchid, if I can get my hands on a nice big one, I'd like one of those. And then there were two others that I actually was able to order. I think I hear Punkin meowing. I heard Punkin outside the door meowing. She ran away, thought she wanted to come in, she did not. The other <laughs> orchids, I went in and ordered them. There are two Phalaenopsis types that I really like. One is called Cotton Candy, which is Fal Ching de Beauty Sakura, which has really long pendulous blooms on them. Nice big, like cherry pink flowers on them. Supposed to be an extremely abundant bloomer, so I am so excited to get that one. And then the other one is, um, I think called Sunset, it's a gemstone one, Tahiti maybe? I don't know, I'll have them up here on the screen. And when those come in, we can talk about them. The dogs left, second the door open, they're like, nope, we're out. We're begging to come in, but I guess I was talking too much. But that's everything that's going on with the orchids. It's the orchid update of the year. You know, I all know I don't talk around that much and whenever I do, I go on my little tirade about how more people need to be growing them because it's that, why is this different from growing a gloriosum? I know it's a completely different aesthetic, but as far as what you gotta go through to take care of them, really not that different. I guess flowers over foliage, that's just a matter of taste. I understand that. You can grow multiple things though. You can have lots of plants with big leaves and a couple little things that have some flowers on them. It's nice to have some variety around. Ah, oh, whatever. It's been fun. It was a nice week. I enjoyed going to the show despite them packing the sale into what I think, I'm not joking, I think that the room they put that sale in might have been a closet. Only saying that because it was just down the hall from where the auditorium and the show areas are. So like that might actually be where they do coat checks for events. I'm not sure. It was not much bigger than this room. Not being dramatic, I kind of feel bad for the Orchid Society and the vendors who came out there and then got shoved into that little, and I'm not trash talking either. I love the botanical gardens. The sale itself just felt like such a downgrade from what it used to be in the past as far as space is concerned and that's more of a me feeling bad for the vendors like how how did they even set up maybe that's all the space the vendors needed i don't know i didn't talk to them about it maybe it was more just an issue for the people who wanted to buy the orchids who like couldn't really walk around very well i don't know and it's a whole new setup in there too it's the building's been completely redone this is their first go at it maybe they'll try something different next hopefully they will hopefully they'll figure something else out because that really wasn't a pleasant experience for me personally maybe other comment down below let me know your thoughts like i said the show itself the display 
gorgeous. I'll go back and get some nice footage of that on a day when it's less crowded. But the sale, which is only one weekend of the year, I, I just, no. No, that was disappointing, but uh, they, uh, people who were there had some nice looking plants and it was good to see some familiar faces. Comment down below, what's going on with you and your plants, your house plants, what's the, do you have any orchids, orchid troubles, favorite orchids? Let me know. There's some great orchid channels out there if you want to binge on that. Uh, TD Moore, lots of information on the orchids. Ninja orchids. Hey Ninja, how's it going? Lots of great orchid videos. There's my orchid, well, my tropical plant adventures. Used to be my orchid adventures. Very informative, great videos. There are tons. Miss Orchid Girl. There are lots of channels that are much more specifically just orchids. Shout out some of your favorite places to order orchids online, because I think that's what I'm going to have to be doing from now on. Or I may actually, the some of the orchid places up in Chicago, they have open houses in the spring. I may drive up to Chicago <laughs> to buy orchids. It's not that far of a drive. Chicago is pretty. They could make for a fun weekend. I don't been doing this stuff since 2019, so it's just nice to be back at it. And the events are up and going again and getting to see all the fun, pretty plants and all the nice smells. It smells so good at the orchid show. If you ever have an opportunity to go to any type of orchid show, go just for the smell. It smells so freaking good. Yeah, that's all. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Get back out to the grow space next week. I just, I need some separation from it. I've spent so much time out there dealing with that spider mite situation, which has been documented. It's been in all the videos. If you want to talk about, go watch past videos. They're all very recent. I just, I need a break. That and I, I can't film anything with new plants out there until that problem seems like it's resolving. Until I know those predator mites are actually doing something, I'm not taking any new plants out there. But yeah, a little bit echoey, not as much of a fun background with all the plants and whatnot. Still noisy because I totally forgot that I had a space heater running behind me for the majority of this video. Sorry about that. And I don't have any of the sound buffering material up in here yet because I haven't done the crown molding yet, which hopefully will be going on next week. Maybe, hopefully, we'll see. Oh, we want a baby fish update before we go? Are they out? They, t they like to hide a lot. I was hoping they would come out because they've grown so freaking much. The fry from these Crabenzi cichlids that are in here, they are very fast growing. They've like tripled in size in a week, but not there on the backside. And you can see this area right here. I haven't been scrubbing the glass over here because this is where they like to hang out with their babies, so. It can stay mucky, I don't care. It has lots of good stuff in there for the babies to munch on. So I'm not scrubbing it off, not until they've grown up some more. I'll get some footage and post it up there on my Instagram. So give me a follow on there. And hopefully I'll have something up in my stories the same day this video comes out. And you can see how big the babies are getting. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye, bye. Hey, Turbo. Hey, Tobes. We got some more snow. Oh, you coming in? Coming inside, huh? Uh drastic change in the weather it's supposed to get down to like nine degrees tonight so i gotta it's this it. i have to get this in here and it's gotta come in here because the gates are frozen shut i can't get the gates open and pour boiling water on them nothing they're just yeah so this is this will be interesting it'll fit right might drip some water on the floor that's okay i don't i don't know what i'm doing here being my helper toby you're both being so helpful standing in the way right where i need to be you can come in come on come on come on come on come on good boy baby should go pot first because the thing is the palm tree's frozen you really shouldn't be messing with the frozen plants all that much because you can break them so i don't want to re-bend the branches to get it in the house they may never go back to how they need to be <laughs> He really likes the snow. Could lay it down this way and then carry the pot. I have to figure this out then. It's 11 degrees, kind of cold.